Most sports fans look up to athletes because they amaze us. Professional athletes can run faster, jump higher, and exhibit feats of strength that make them look like superheroes. But athletes are all human like the rest of us, which means they're mortal, too. Here are athletes we lost in 2019. Mel Stottlemyre was a reliable and vital member of the New York Yankees pitching staff in the late 1960s and early 70s. He amassed 164 wins, a 2.97 earned run average, more than 1,200 strikeouts, three 20-win seasons, and five all-star appearances. Stottlemyre was also one of the best hitting pitchers. He once had five hits in one game, and of his seven career home runs, one was an improbable inside-the-park grand slam. Stottlemyre didn't win a World Series ring as a player, but he did win five as a pitching coach. In the 80s, he signed on with the New York Mets and helped its legendary 1986 squad to a World Series championship. He later returned to the Yankees as a pitching coach and won another four titles. He retired in 2008 after one last coaching job with the Seattle Mariners. According to his wife, he fought blood cancer for nearly two decades. He died at age 77. After debuting with a Rookie of the Year season in Major League Baseball in 1956, Frank Robinson spent nine more seasons with the Cincinnati Reds. In 1961, he led the team to its first pennant in more than 20 years. Robinson earned the NL MVP honors and a gold glove. The Reds traded Robinson to Baltimore ahead of the 1966 season, and he immediately delivered for the Orioles to a World Series winning season, hitting 316 with 49 home runs and 122 runs batted in. He led the league in all three categories, earning Robinson the exceedingly rare triple crown of hitting. Just be patient, see the ball and hit it. Robinson later wound up in Cleveland, where in 1975 he was appointed player manager, making him the first African-American boss in baseball history. He retired from play to focus on managing in 1976, and in 1989 he was named manager of the year. Robinson was a first ballot Hall of Famer in 1982. He was 83 when he died. Gordon Banks had a long and successful career in English league soccer as a goaltender for Leicester City and Stoke City. He won a spot on England's national team in 1963. He rose to the occasion of playing on the world stage and will forever be a legend in his home country as part of the 1966 World Cup winning squad. England defended its title in the 1970 World Cup final, this time facing the Brazilian team. While Brazil ultimately squeaked out a 1-0 win, the game is more memorable for a Banks deflection now known as the save of the century. Brazilian star Pele hit a textbook header toward the lower corner of the net, but Banks somehow knocked it away. The International Federation of Football History and Statistics ranked Banks the number two all-time goalkeeper in international play. He died in his sleep at age 81. Don Newcomb was one of the last living players who remembered taking the field in Brooklyn. Newcomb also played for the Cincinnati Reds and Cleveland Indians, but he'll forever be associated with Dodger Blue. While playing semi-pro baseball as a teenager, Newcomb got the attention of the Brooklyn Dodgers, who signed him to pitch for the team. Newcomb was among the first African Americans to play in the MLB, entering the league in 1949, just two years after teammate Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier. Newcomb is the only player in MLB history to win Rookie of the Year, MVP, and Cy Young honors. In his rookie season, he had a 17-8 record with five shutouts and 149 strikeouts. Newcomb got even better, winning 19 and 20 games in the next two seasons. He then missed two seasons to serve in the military during the Korean War, but he came back in a big way. In 1955, he won 20 games and led the Brooklyn Dodgers to a World Series title. The following year, he was named both the National League's MVP and its Cy Young Award recipient. Newcomb died at age 92. Terrible Ted Lindsay was a standout in the wild, hardscrabble National Hockey League of the mid-20th century. Lindsay played more than 1,000 games and scored 379 goals over his 17-season career, almost all of them with the Detroit Red Wings. As part of the legendary production line, alongside center Sid Abel and right-winger Gordie Howe, Lindsay ultimately won four Stanley Cups in the 1950s. Relatively small at just 5'8", Lindsay was known for being scrappy and tenacious. And there was no friends on the ice. They were all enemies. In 1950, Lindsay won the Art Ross Trophy, the NHL's award for its top scorer. He was elected to the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1966, and his number seven hangs in the rafters above Red Wings games. Lindsay earned a spot on the NHL's list of its 100 greatest players of all time, and in 2010, the NHL Players Association renamed the league MVP prize the Ted Lindsay Award. Lindsay passed away at his home in Michigan. He was 93. 
Marilyn Smith was the definition of a Hall of Fame golfer with 21 tournament wins. But perhaps even more impressive is how she changed the face of women's sports by helping create the Ladies Professional Golf Association, the world's oldest women's sports institution. As a child growing up in Kansas in the 1930s and 40s, Smith pitched on a boys' baseball team. After her father promised her a new bike when she could hit nine holes in under 40 strokes, she met the challenge. Before she graduated high school, she'd won three state golf titles. At the University of Kansas, she comprised the entirety of the women's golf squad and won the individual collegiate national title in 1949. Smith and a dozen other golfers created the LPGA in 1950. Smith won her first pro championship four years later and eventually served as president of the group. If we ever got publicity, it was on the back page of the, of the newspaper. After retirement, ABC Sports hired her to cover men's golf tournaments, making her the first woman to ever do that, too. Smith died at age 89. Playing as both a guard and tackle, Forrest Gregg was so committed and put in so much effort that legendary Green Bay Packers coach Vince Lombardi called him the best player I ever coached. Gregg was a nine-time Pro Bowl selection over the course of a 15-season career for the Dallas Cowboys as well as the Packers. He earned the nickname Iron Man after competing in a then-record 188 straight games, suited up for six conference championship teams, and played in three Super Bowls, winning it all in 1967, 1978, and 1972. The 1977 Pro Football Hall of Fame inductee went on to coach for 11 seasons, leading the Green Bay Packers, Cleveland Browns, and Cincinnati Bengals. Greg died of complications from Parkinson's disease at 85. In his 16-year career with the Boston Celtics, John Havlicek won an astounding eight championships, including four in his first four seasons. Only two NBA players have won more rings than Havlicek, his teammates Bill Russell and Sam Jones. Havlicek scored a total of 26,395 points, making him the top scorer in Celtics history. He also boasted 13 All-Star selections, 11 All-NBA team selections, a retired number, and enshrinement in the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. Havlicek graduated to team leader by the mid-70s and was named the MVP of the 1974 NBA Finals. As a teenager in Ohio, Havlicek was a multi-sport athlete. He went All-State in not just basketball, but baseball and football, too. The Cleveland Browns drafted him, but Havlicek ultimately chose basketball, tallying a 78-6 and record with a 1960 NCAA title. The Celtics star died at age 79. What more can I say? Thank you, Boston. I love you. Leonard Red Kelly was a tough but fair defensive powerhouse who came of age in the NHL's storied Original Six era. Over a 21-season career, Kelly hoisted the Stanley Cup a remarkable eight times, four times with the Detroit Red Wings and four with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Kelly was known primarily for his ability to keep opponents out of the net, spending 13 years as a Red Wings defenseman. But he was pretty good at offense, too, amassing 281 goals and 542 assists. Kelly made the NHL All-Star list eight times, won the Lady Bing Trophy for sportsmanship four times, and was the inaugural recipient of the Norris Trophy for the league's top defensive player in 1954. In 1962, while still playing in the NHL, Kelly won a seat in Canada's parliament representing an area of Toronto. In February 2019, Kelly saw the Red Wings retire his jersey number four, making him just the eighth player to receive that honor. The Hall of Fame hockey star died at age 91. Austria-born Formula One racer Nicky Lauda used family money to buy his way into big races in 1971 and 1972. By 1973, he was a top three finisher and soon he was a superstar. In the 1975 F1 season, he won five of 14 races and easily secured his first world championship. The following year, Lauda again won five races but was edged out in the final standings by his close friend and professional rival James Hunt, a relationship dramatized in the 2000 13 film Rush. In that 1976 season, Lauda nearly died in a crash at the German Grand Prix. In what was likely a suspension failure, his Ferrari smashed into a wall and as other cars hit him, the vehicle caught fire and severely burned Lauda's face. He was even given last rights, but he survived and was racing again less than six weeks later. In 1977, Lauda reclaimed his championship and won another one in 1984 after coming out of retirement. Lauda passed away at the age of 70. 
Bart Starr led a dynasty in Green Bay. The University of Alabama quarterback kind of snuck his way into the NFL, drafted in the 17th round in 1956. He wasn't even a starting QB for a while, but when he finally got the job full-time, he exploded, helping the Green Bay Packers to NFL titles in 1961, 1962, and 1965. When the NFL and rival AFL began pitting their champions against one another in a Super Bowl, Starr's teams won the first two. Starr played in the NFL for 16 seasons, all of them with the Packers. He was selected to four Pro Bowls, was named the NFL MVP in 1966, led the league in completion percentage four times, and racked up more than 24,000 passing yards. In the 1967 NFL title game, nicknamed the Ice Bowl, Starr executed a quarterback sneak to give the Packers a 21-17 win over the Dallas Cowboys. Starr, inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1977, had reportedly been in poor health since suffering a heart attack and two strokes in 2014, and he died in Birmingham, Alabama at age 85. Over a 22-year career, Bill Buckner was among baseball's most reliable players. His lifetime stats included a batting average of 289 and 2,715 hits. Buckner peaked in the early 80s during his time with the Chicago Cubs. He was the 1980 National League batting champion and made the All-Star team in 1981. Soon after, Buckner was traded to the Boston Red Sox, where he'd be part of the 1986 World Series-bound squad. Despite all those achievements, it would be a single moment in that fall class that would mar Buckner's career forever. The Red Sox nearly broke a 68-year championship drought, up three games to two over the New York Mets with a lead in Game 6. In the 10th inning, with the score tied, the Mets' Mookie Wilson hit a slow grounder to Buckner. He misjudged it, and it rolled through his legs into the outfield. A Mets runner scored the game-winning run, forcing a seventh game in which the Mets were victorious. Buckner single-handedly took the blame for the Red Sox continuing misfortunes. After he retired in 1990, he moved to Idaho and bought a ranch. Buckner died at age 69 after a battle with Lewy body dementia. Jim Bouton was a phenomenal pitcher for the New York Yankees in the early 1960s. In 1963, just his second full year in the major leagues, Bouton racked up all-star numbers, winning 21 games with six shutouts. The next year, he pitched another 18 wins with four shutouts, and in 1963 and 1964, the Yankees won the American League pennant. He was never quite the same after a 1965 injury. Not counting a brief comeback attempt in 1978, his career finished up after 1970 following stints with the Seattle Pilots and Houston Astros. But Bouton would have a huge second act. In 1970, Bouton turned his recollections of his baseball days into Ball 4, a shocking expose of what baseball players really got up to, the main takeaways being that Mickey Mantle liked to party and lots of players ingested performance-enhancing stimulants. It also took stock of the economics of baseball. Ball Ford documented owner abuse and the general manager's abuse of the players, how they took advantage of them, treated them unfairly. In addition to working as a sportscaster in the New York area, Bouton further added to the magic of baseball by co-inventing Big League Chew. The baseball lifer was 80 when he died. In his junior year at Santa Monica High School in Southern California, Tyler Skaggs struck out 89 batters, walked just 22, pitched a perfect game, and notched a ridiculously low 1.11 ERA on the way to being named Conference Player of the Year. The next year, the Los Angeles Angels drafted the local standout only to trade him to the Arizona Diamondbacks, who then traded Skaggs back to the Angels, where he would spend the rest of his career. Skaggs' best year came in 2018 with a 4.02 ERA and an 8-10 record. In 2019, he'd nearly matched his personal wins record with 7 by late June. Shortly after pitching in a home game against Oakland, Skaggs and the rest of the team headed for Dallas for a four-game series against the Texas Rangers. He was found unresponsive in his suburban Dallas hotel room. Authorities were summoned, who pronounced Skaggs dead. An autopsy report obtained by People magazine stated that Skaggs' cause of death was the result of a mixture of alcohol, fentanyl, and oxycodone intoxication with terminal aspiration of gastric contents. He choked to death on his own vomit only a few days shy of his 28th birthday. 
Greg Johnson was a hockey superstar while still in college. At the University of North Dakota in the late 1980s, the Ontario-born forward scored 272 points in four seasons, making him the school's all-time top scorer. He finally hit the NHL ice in 1993 for the Detroit Red Wings and bounced around the league for a while until 1998, when he became one of the first ever players for the expansion Nashville Predators. Johnson was named team captain, a position of leadership he deeply enjoyed. According to his former agent, Johnson invited criticism from the NHL Players Association because he refused to negotiate with the Predators for a bigger contract, hoping not to alienate management. The Players Association stripped him of his captain status. After a physical uncovered and irregular heartbeat, Johnson retired after a 12-year pro career at the relatively young age of 35. Johnson died in his Detroit-area home at the age of 48. Pernell Whitaker made his debut on the world stage as part of Team USA. The 5'6 southpaw from Norfolk, Virginia took home a gold medal at the 1984 Summer Olympics. Just a few months later, he made his professional debut in the ring, showing off not only punches but some of the craftiest defense in boxing history. Nicknamed Sweet Pea, Whitaker amassed a remarkable record of 40 wins, 4 losses, and 1 draw over a 17-year career. Of those victories, 17 were knockouts and 21 were unanimous decisions. He was just that dominant in his weight classes, of which he had several. Whitaker won titles in an unheard of four weight classes, lightweight, junior lightweight, welterweight, and junior middleweight. Whitaker was named to the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 2006. Police in Virginia Beach said he was struck by a car while walking through an intersection. Sweet P. Whitaker was 55. Since joining the professional boxing circuit in 2016, Russian-born, California-based fighter Maxim Dadashev proved himself a formidable competitor in the junior welterweight class. He won his first 13 fights and an impressive 11 of those came via undisputed knockouts. On July 19, 2019, Dadashev squared off in Oxon Hill, Maryland against Puerto Rican boxer Subriel Mateus, who came into the match with a 13-0 record. Mateus dominated the fight from the beginning, landing numerous hard hard blows to Dadashev's head. Dadashev's trainer, Buddy McGirt, considered ending the fight after the ninth round, but Dadashev kept fighting through the 11th round when McGirt finally put a stop to the bout. That gave Mateus, ahead on the scorecards, a win via TKO. The stoppage would sadly prove too late. Dadashev collapsed and vomited on the way to his dressing room. Paramedics rushed the fighter to a local hospital for emergency surgery to treat bleeding on the brain. Doctors placed him in a medically induced coma, but Dadashev would ultimately succumb to his injuries. He was 28 years old. From 2001 to 2004, Texas Longhorns running back Cedric Benson put up some of the most impressive stats in college football history. He rushed for well over 1,000 yards in each of his four seasons, and his 5,540 total yards put him at ninth on the all-time list. His 64 touchdowns are the second best ever at Texas. In his senior year, Benson had 1,834 yards and 19 touchdowns, winning him the Doak Walker Award, recognizing the nation's top running back. The Chicago Bears selected Benson with the fourth overall pick in the 2005 NFL Draft. In 2007, he led the team to its first Super Bowl appearance in more than two decades. The running back played a total of eight seasons for various teams in the pros, rushing for more than 1,000 yards three times with career totals of 6,107 rushing yards and 32 touchdowns. In August 2019, a minivan attempting to cross through an intersection in Austin, Texas struck Benson's motorcycle. The 36-year-old Benson and a female passenger were pronounced dead at the scene. Barry Bennett played for 11 seasons in the NFL. A defensive tackle and defensive end, he was a reliable member of the line, putting up a moderate number of sacks through his four years with the New Orleans Saints and six seasons with the New York Jets. After playing in one regular season game for the Minnesota Vikings in 1988, Bennett settled in the small town of Long Prairie, Minnesota, where he worked for years as a physical education teacher and coach. Bennett retired and remained in Long Prairie with his wife, Carol, and together they were tragically discovered dead from gunshot wounds in their home. Within a few days, police had arrested a suspect, Bennett's son Dylan John Bennett. Bennett was 63. Kelly Catlin was among the best track cyclists in the world, always putting on an amazing display for spectators. After a running injury at age 17, Catlin took up cycling and remarkably just four years later she was competing in the 2016 Summer Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. Catlin and her team won a silver medal there, along with three straight world championships in 2016, 2017, and 2018. 
Catlin broke her arm in an October 2018 crash and endured a concussion after slipping while riding on a road in December 2018. After a suicide attempt in January 2019, Catlin accepted her coach's urging to take some time away from racing and she pulled out of the 2019 Track Cycling World Championships. On March 7, 2019, Catlin took her own life according to her family. The cyclist was 23 years old. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK.